Hello and welcome to Python Design Patterns. My name is Tong Q. I've been a web developer for over five years, working in fintech and e-commerce. I have extensive experience using Python to create large-scale, low-latency production services, and I'm a strong believer that good design can save weeks if not months of dev, build and maintenance time, hence my interest in design patterns. Let's have a look at what we'll learn throughout this course. We start with a warm-up section, which introduces the concept and classification of design patterns. We'll also look at some useful advanced Python topics such as iterators and list comprehension. And also recap Python classes, focusing on single and multiple inheritance. Our second section, Building with Factories, will cover patterns concerned with object creation and instantiation. We'll start by looking at an example implementation of the factory pattern, extending this to abstract factory, and finish with a deep dive and comparison of the singleton and Borg patterns. After this, we move on to structuring around, where we cover structural design patterns. We'll continue to learn through practical examples, such as modeling a socket adapter using the adapter pattern, and an efficient way to build different UI windows using the decorator pattern. Next, we have two sections covering behavioural patterns, just because there's quite a lot of them. Across these two sections, we'll cover examples including the state pattern, the observer pattern, and finish by looking at a really powerful extension of the observer pattern, known as reactive programming, and a set of Python libraries for this called RxPy. Finally, we'll finish with a section not often included in courses on design patterns, and look at some anti-patterns or patterns to avoid when trying to build robust, extensible software. I'll illustrate their problems through a mixture of code examples and UML diagrams. By the end of the course, you should have a good understanding of why design patterns are useful in general, as well as a deep understanding of the main 20 or so design patterns, including when and how to use them. And finally, you should also understand the dangers of anti-patterns and how they can be avoided or refactored. The requirements for this course are as follows. You should have a basic understanding of Python. You should also have Python either version 2 or 3 installed on your computer to be able to follow along with the code examples. And finally, you should also have a basic understanding of object-oriented programming. I hope you enjoy the course, and let's get started.